a little bit better. You are live. There we go. You are live. Christian, cheers. We are checking in here from Severna Park, Maryland. Severnaya. Park. Severnaya Park, Maryland. For GoldenEye fans. Yep. We have uh, the second straight week live audience. I have Christian's beautiful wife, Anna, here. And my beautiful girlfriend, Ashlyn. And little buster-ass asshole doggy over here who's been chasing everyone around all day. But... Um, First off, off the top, I want to say cheers to you and cheers to you, Anna. I know the little baby is sleeping right now, Callan, in there. But I, I think this is so cool, and it's amazing to actually meet him. And like I said last week, Kirsten's like a brother to me. So Uncle Kevin. Got to, to meet to Uncle meet Kevin my new for the first time. That's I right. love you, man, and cheers. Cheers I to you, gotcha, man. Yeah, that uh, caused the delay from 12 o'clock. I mean, you couldn't do this webcast without meeting uh mr talent dude i don't think it was uh it was fitting so we postponed this shit plus we were hungry yes we did we uh, fired up some burgers smash burger style christian you know he used to be my waitress uh bitch back in, in co uh, college sometimes so we could cook some steaks and stuff yeah and i used to but, spit in your food without you fucking knowing you cocksucking asshole i love him too but anyway we had some nice burgers we walked over to Christian and Anna's brand new house. They're actually building a house, which is to be opening up in August. Yep. Maybe. Yep. Exciting stuff. But Christian Lavender, we went to school together, Flagler College in St. Augustine, Florida. And it's the nation's oldest city. That's what they say. It's a school that I visited once with my twin brother, Ryan, and we knew that it was it. And, uh, we used to have condos down in Jupiter, Florida, so I thought, why the hell not make Florida our home for school for four years? And in that time, you know, we met Christian and went to a bunch of concerts, amazing good times, and I'll share with you a little bit more about it. But Christian, uh, he's lived in Roswell, Georgia, Maryland now. He I guarantee you can't name them all. Athens, Georgia. Uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Yep. Severna, Severnaya Park, Maryland. Mm -hmm. You got to go, you got to go, uh, Seattle, the Queen Anne in Seattle. No, I did not live in Queen Anne. Lived in three different places in Seattle. You lived in Ballard? Yep. Come on. Cool oh, no. one. We got a, we got a we Seattle bike, local here. I'm drawing a blank right now. Bike man. to some shows, walk to the Paramount to go see Temple, the dog, and East Lake. And then the last one was Edmonds. I, I would have never gone up to Seattle at least for another decade or two, and it was cool because where he's lived, we've gone to concerts. I have found him, and it's always a free, cool place to stay, of course, when you have friends in town. But uh, he's lived around. He's, he's been around the block. And, uh, you know, today, John Bonham turned 72. You know, RIP John Bonham, he would have turned 72. And Christian is... I've known of Led Zeppelin. My dad has introduced me to Zeppelin through the rock and roll song and uh, let's see, Cashmere and Stairway to Heaven, you know, the popular hits off of Zoso and Physical Graffiti. But it was in college, hanging out with Christian. He would be always the DJ, introduced me to a bunch of different stuff. And I owe you to, to actually get me into Led Zeppelin. You played No Quarter for me. That's the first time I heard that before. Yep. In the Light off of Physical Graffiti. <clears throat> yep. Mastodon, Gojira, and uh, shit. I mean, the amount of nights that we would have. Usually it was a Friday night. We'd go out, hit the bars, and then 2 a.m. would roll around. And we'd see Headbangers Ball on MTV when we used to have Headbangers Ball. And uh, Dark New Day, Dark, Red. Dark New Day, Red, Chevelle. All the stuff. Love it. We got some STP on right now. I know we talked about STP last week. But on to this week's uh, subject material. Oh, and by the way, before we get there, I was looking up Prince recently. And I don't know too much Prince. If you want to just educate me on Prince, like guitar playing Prince, that'd be really cool. I never knew he was five foot three. I did not know that. I knew he, uh, I knew he banged our Carmen Electra for a while. Oh, really? I did know that. I thought that yeah. was Dennis Rodman. No, he actually took her virginity. 
Prince took Carmen Electra. That is Jr. true. That is true. So, so, so Dennis too. Rodman had Prince's seconds. And that's a very fitting story because Prince is from Minnesota. And there's riots in Minnesota right now, which we're not going to fucking discuss today. No, oh, no, we're not. No, we're not. Peace and love, baby. No, no. Shut up. And before I get into the St. Augustine show that we went to, uh, there was something that happened two weeks ago, two Saturdays ago. It was an anniversary that I totally forgot. And I know you're not the biggest fan, but Marshall Mathers LP, it turned 20 years old on May the 23rd. That is the very first CD I've ever owned. I remember my mother took me, Ryan, and Leonard over to Media Play, and uh, we got the edited versions. And if you know, if you ever listened to Eminem's Marshall Mathers record, that took him to diamond status. And there's entire like 10 second pauses, and me, me, Ryan, let me joke about how many pauses there are in the edited version. Still, when I hear that song, only one, no, only one, you know, it's just so funny. So 20 years, Marshall Mathers LP. I don't listen to too much rap. It's usually Eminem, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg. I know in your case you like the P.D. Pablo and Nelly and stuff, but that's I don't that's know what okay. the hell you're talking about. I tuned out. I heard Marshall Mathers and haven't listened to a thing since. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to talk about music that uh, we both relate to here? Yes. <laughs> it starts with these bands called Stained Seether, Papa Roach, Red. The very first concert that we went to together... By the way, we are two-thirds of the Three Musketeers. We were known in college as the Three Musketeers. We hung out with each other so much. Third, think, third Tony, one's out there somewhere watching. Ryan is watching here, so what's up, Ryan? Ryan, you recognize this? Thank you. It's a shirt you gave me in Seattle from a band that I found in Seattle. Helms Ali. He got this at a concert in Buffalo, New York, and brought it to <laughs> Seattle, where the band's from. Gave it to me. Good man, Rye. Love it. Appreciate it, brother. Helms Ali is one of the bands out of Seattle that Christian introduced us to. And, you know, there's a band called Sand Rider, too. But anywho, uh, Stained Seether, Papa Roach, and Red. Those are four bands that this guy over here really uh, introduced us to. We have some souvenirs from the show I'd like to show you. But this was uh, October of 2008. I actually had skipped the class called Money and Banking to go to the show. And I could have gone to the class, and I made it up for that class, and I actually did pretty well in the end, right? But uh, we were really enjoying – this is the ticket here. There you go. Original ticket. Those little doggies. We just uh, – if you remember what we were drinking at that time. Yes. Yes. It was a concoction I came up with that right now sounds absolutely horrific, and I would never drink again. I would never play anything like this in my body again. It was NAS energy drink mixed with Captain Morgan silver, and we drank it, no joke. <laughs> Each serving was probably a liter's worth of fluid, so probably a few different energy, few NAS energy drinks, <laughs> and God knows how much of that Captain Silver. We we did a lot, and we had our Subaru car. I think I want to say we drove the Subaru there. We had an 05 Subaru Outback. Uh, shit, we beat that thing up. But it was Captain Morgan Silver, and I totally forgot it was one of those, the NOS energy drinks. NOS energy drink. I thought it was Monster or Red Bull, but we... Yep. For a first show for us to go to, we've traveled all around the world to shows. Uh, I remember walking through that gate. Actually, I don't remember walking through that gate. And uh, let's just show some souvenirs right now, shall we? You saw the ticket. I don't have the bracelet that I wore that, that night. But it went red, uh, Papa Roach, yep. Seether, and then Stained came out. That's it. Four bands from the early 2000s and the post-grunge new metal phase. And I think Christian's got something to show you from the band Red, which were a Christian rock band. So when Christian is introducing me to a Christian rock band for the first time, he's the first Christian I ever met. Christian name. I said that to Kevin that, hey, dude, check out this Christian rock band. I'm pretty positive Kevin and Ryan would have said, yo, fuck off. Yeah. yeah I mean, come on. Um, my dad still calls him Kristen to this day. He's Kristen, <laughs> accidentally. Mr. Lavola, if you're watching, is that true? Yeah, I think it's true. 
So, Kristen, why don't you show our viewers here this drumstick that you caught? A little rundown about it. This is Red's drumstick. I remember the drummer had long brown hair. I remember he was waving it all around. And I remember he threw it up. Nobody went for it but me. Long and I got wingspan. It. I mean, longer <laughs> wingspan than me. You know, this guy. Yeah, that was the first piece of memorabilia. Actually, I ever got it any show we went to, obviously, since we're talking about the first show we went to. So that was your first souvenir that you ever had at a show? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. You know, All right, started the collection that is now, that you just saw before we came out here. You're 20 years old. You're uh, juniors in college. And the next band up is a band called Papa Roach. And I remember, Rye, you had your buzz cut hair and Jacoby Shaddix. HIV positive, but still a really <laughs> awesome human being. Really funny guy, too. Uh, <laughs> Here's another you need a little Promark stick. Um, Tony Palermo. I believe he's still the drummer with Papa Roach. Those guys are still kicking. Their record, Infest, which had the uh, Cut My Life Into Pieces. <laughs> that record actually uh, just turned 20. Um, and they had their little quarantine hangout for band and their viewers and stuff, so this was really beaten up um, to be there in our school's, you know, backyard, St. Augustine Amphitheater to catch that. was really cool. Uh, one thing I remember about that show, and again, I was 20 years old and really uh, early on in my concert going career. I had a, a middle finger up for the first three quarters of that show. I mean, I, again, I was so hammered, but I just had a middle finger up. And it was because of all those Metallica DVDs that I saw that these, these fans would just go ballistic and they'd always show the fans in the 80s. And I was like, ah, you know. So I was just sitting there just casually with my finger up and I was just smiling, you know, enjoying and everything. And, and uh, I just remember it was Troy McLawhorn from Cedar. He, uh, he put his pick, or he put his pick in his mouth and gave me a middle finger with the face. And uh, I did that for a few more shows and I thought maybe that's not the right way to do it. It was in Dark New Day, by the way, as we mentioned earlier. Dark New Day, he was. Yep. Headliners, well, Seether was really, really cool. You made us a, a mixtape of Seether back when we were, right before we were about to go to this show. Christian was so familiar with these bands, like Red, Papa Roach, Seether, and Stain. And uh, I remember you had songs on there for Rito. You had uh, Seether and Red were two bands that I really liked. Papa Roach. I didn't know too much about them other than the Infest album, like you mentioned. It was good stuff, but uh, Dead Cell. Stained uh, covered Nutshell by Alice in Chains at that show. Oh, shit, you're right. They did. Mm hmm. Yep. You really like that. I know that. Yeah, that's what I remember about that. And that's a song that I learned uh, thanks to you, Michael Holden. Nutshell off the MTV Unplugged cheers, show. Cheers to Mike. Cheers to Mike. And so I know of SDP, one of my favorites. We listened to it on the beach the other day. Uh, Stained. Stained drumstick. Or drumstick. So when I catch two drumsticks, you know, you hear a lot of the chirping from all the other people with shorter arms. But it shows, you know, I just get a little selfish. and I think I've lightened up a bit, but I've caught a lot of stuff over the years. And I've experienced a lot of really really cool things with really putting my nose in it just really being in the forefront of all that stuff including this drumstick this is original drummer john waisaki he's actually kicked out of the band because uh he didn't come prepared to their 2012 self-titled sessions uh, i think he's got a really good swing there you go stained drumstick these souvenirs are reunited for the first time in person since October 2008. 12 years ago, man. Yep. This is probably the best one. Uh, Rye, this is this is for you. I caught this one <coughs> from Aaron Lewis. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that one. I hope you're yeah, screenshotting mom, this, mom, Rye. Mom, don't look. Mom, Hannah. Oh. Yeah, I can't remember the song precisely. Kevin and I were discussing 
I think it was actually the nutshell performance that got this from, but I can't confirm that. We were pretty inebriated due to NOS and Captain Morgan Silver. So foggy, foggy memory, especially since that was how many years ago now? Is that 08? It's 12 years. 12 years ago. In nuts. In October, right? In nuts. And speaking of what we were drinking, my mother is currently asking what we are drinking now. Uh, Nani and Papa, I know they really like some gin and tonics in their day, right? So we got some gin and tonic from Schwit. What kind of gin is this? You no. Know? Uh, I can't remember which one this was, but I know it's a sample from when I used to work in the liquor <laughs> industry. Uh, this has lasted me many, many years, Kevin. I got rid of about 60 bottles. I actually gave the bottles away to Mexicans to do work on my house when we lived in Edmonds. And that's how I eliminated a bunch of the inventory before I moved. Oh boy. Hey, and, dude. And before this, Dad, we had one of your wine of the weeks to so spill the wine. We had a the Vignier. We all enjoyed it over some smash burgers. So thanks a lot for that. But overall, I just remember that show in St. Augustine Amphitheater. And we experienced some pretty bitchin' memories there later on in our college career. But um, I remember getting into the car and having the worst headache. I wonder why. But I remember leaning on the passenger seat, on the, the window, and thinking to myself, wow, that was a pit. How did I survive that? I felt really just battered and bruised and really soft. And just beaten up uh, from standing all day. And I always thought about that feeling going into the pit ever since then. I've been to countless pits, so has so Christian over the years. But it's it's uh it's pretty tough, but we we built up a little tolerance for that. Now the backs and the knees aren't feeling too hot. Fun experience. I passed money in banking. Totally worth it. So you have anything else to add from that concert that you remember? No, man. It was, it was a, great, a really nice great day. Show. Great show. Great show. First concert at St. Augustine Amphitheater for us. Second one. Do you recall what our second one was? At the St. Augustine Amphitheater. Allison James. Yep. Not yeah. to steal another future podcast or webcast here, but uh, yeah, that was a fantastic You're gathering show. the souvenirs down in Kirsten's closet. <laughs> Kirsten's closet. You're gathering. Yeah, you know that one. And uh, Kirsten actually uh, gave me one of his souvenirs that I totally forgot that he had. And this is a flag from 1995 official. Made in Italy. Won't find that one with the old school okay. logo. Alice in Chains. It says Alice the Chains Rod. It's really cool, huh? What do you think about that, Tony? Right? Yeah, I think that needs to be draped on the uh, on the uh, drum kit, Kev. Ashton, you know, we'll put this in our kitchen. Is, is that all right? I think, <laughs> oh, it's okay? Okay, so this is going to go in our kitchen tonight. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're so nice. <laughs> Alice in Chains, we really connected on. Um, a, lot, a lot of good music memories, dude. I can just Going, but that night was the first of many shows that we went to around the world, from Germany to Tampa to Vancouver to Montreal to L.A. to Seattle to Germany, Nürburgring, Germany, Frog Czech Republic. Yes, I think Christian will be on the future episodes. But I wanted to have a few questions. You know, now that we talked about the show, you've become a dad since I last saw you, and uh, it was so cool to pull up to the driveway and see you holding <coughs> Kellen trip. Uh, how has becoming a father changed you the most? That's a good one. I would probably have to say perspective on life as a whole has changed since becoming a father. You realize what truly is important in life. And um, <clears throat> uh, the little things aren't so big anymore, you know your dedication to your child and being there for them and being a good person for them and a good role model. That's really, that's really what you think about moving forward. So it definitely, without a doubt, perspective overall, just in life has changed the most. Awesome. He's growing and he turns six months. Uh, is it next month? 14th of June. 14th of June coming up the day yep. before Leonard's birthday. Leonard, you're moving back to California on June the 4th. You'll be missed, man. We're wishing you well as well. Peace out, Lynn. Have fun, man. We need to catch up soon. Been a long time. 
Leonard's moving back to wine country in Napa Valley with David Arthur Vineyards in St. Helena. We will absolutely be visiting. So, and speaking of Leonard's birthday, we have a fun story that we're going to discuss on today's episode that Kevin wasn't expecting to discuss. Uh oh. But uh, I don't remember what year this was, but I do remember uh, joining the Lavolo family on a journey up to Teach's cabin. And uh, Elkaville? Yes, in Elkaville. We had some amazing dash of sausages. Had the works. It was a fantastic day. And uh, we had a couple four wheelers out there. Gary Halleck, give him a shout out. Gary Halleck was up there and brought the four wheelers up. And Lynn had a friend who I don't recall his name. But, anyways, the story to get right to it. I think it was Neil Bonicelli, I want to say. Neil Bonicelli. There you go. Give out. a shout out to Neil Bonicelli. I'm sure he's listening to this. <laughs> Lynn decided to go for one more round on the ATV, the four-wheeler. Finish the story. <laughs> Could you tell it better than me? Leonard, uh, against Gary Halleck's uh, instructions, Leonard went out in the, in the, like, the grotto, like the ravine, and the thing fucking tipped over. <laughs> and he was like, just, Leonard was deserted out there in the woods. In the woods? And uh, where's Leonard? This is back when Leonard had hair. When Leonard had hair, he was in high school. And when he was in high school, he was a little pipsqueak asshole kid. Still is. Uh, no, you're not. You're, you're cool, man. But what were you thinking, man? You know, you went in the woods, dude, in the ATV, and it's like upside down, down the hill. And, uh, uh, Gary Halleck, I've never seen him pissed off at someone. He was pissed <laughs> off at you when you got back. Well, I mean, you know. Gary Halleck, he's got his, I don't think he had his dentures in at that time. So he's, you know, <laughs> giving it to Len. <laughs> uh, and then we all had some sausages from Dash's. And we went swimming in that little pond too at Teacher's Cabin and uh, had leeches all over us. So that was fun. Yeah, leeches were fun. <laughs> and at nighttime, bath would swoop down by your face, which is really cool too. <laughs> but Dash's sausage, Dash's sausage, the best in town. Uh, I actually brought some to bring to Christian. And I'm just coming off a week in. Delaware with Ashland and I just I couldn't take it anymore. We we ate all the sausage yesterday, so yeah, thanks, man. So next <laughs> great gift that doesn't exist. I got I got you the buns though. The rolls. I did get the full rolls with nothing to put on them, but it's all good. Next time I owe you. So Anna, we'll get some buffalo sausage for you uh, next time, August. <laughs> well, that's great. Uh, seafood dish. Yeah. Christian, you know, we're a big fan of uh, good good hard rock and heavy metal. We like uh, we like our beers. We also love food. And Christian is an amazing cook, really. He's grilled us so much in college days on. But seafood dish, what, what, what's what's your top? I'm curious, really. Like, mm. You live in Maryland. You've, yeah, dude. You've lived in Seattle. That's it right there, man, Maryland. So Baltimoreans in general, crab is the deal. You come to Maryland, you gotta get blue crab. Blue crab, like I don't know. It tastes, it apart, tastes, tastes different in Maryland, but specifically crab cake sandwich. I told Anna the other day, it's the first thing I would love <coughs> when we got this stupid quarantine thing. I'm craving a good crab cake sandwich. Now, I've taken you to two places. We've been to the Point. We've been to Cantlers. We had the crab cake sandwich at Cantlers. I believe. My first. Yeah, fantastic. But yeah, crab cake sandwich probably I'd go with that. Steam crab's fantastic here. Or, but yeah, still with the crab cake sandwich. Definitely get the blue crab from the Maryland. Though. There you go. What about buffalo dish? What stands out for Ooh. buffalo? Ooh. This includes Ooh. my mother's sauce that has the buffalo chicken sauce. Oh, dude. That's Maybe a tough one, exclude man. Exclude mom's sauce. I would need like 10 lines to put like buffalo items on there because there's so much, man. And it's, there's so many other places that I feel like I've been like screwed out of eating because like McCarthy or like Steve, Schifferly, Macy's now is on the list. Um, we've got to go. We did get hit 9 11 finally. Those wings were fantastic. But uh, Macy's is on the top of the list. Where else do we got to go? There's a couple of them that we've got to hit up. You just brought one up to me the other day. Yeah, well, uh, Macy's the pizza, uh, wing wise. You gotta get Macy's wings. Barbell, you haven't been to Barbell, have you? No, but what was the oyster place though? Oh, Remington Oyster Bar. It? Yeah, you gotta hit that up. But uh, 
Yeah, man, I don't know, dude. I don't know if I have one dish. I wouldn't say it's the best dish, but there's just something about it. I mean, chefs, dude. Spaghetti parm, man. Something about spaghetti parm, fresh mozz. You got me hooked on it. It's good. Yeah. Anna, how'd you like the spaghetti parm? I mean, come on. Oh, yeah, pretty great. Pretty great, man. Pretty great. I mean, I don't know, man. There's a lot of places. I mean, also the pizza, though. There's like 10,000 different pizza places, though, up there that are just the top notch, man. So. Yeah. Buffalo pizza does do it right. Ashlyn, what's your favorite buffalo fish? Ooh. It's got to be chef spaghetti parm, right? Ooh. Oh, no. Ashlyn was born and raised on Spam, so. That's uh, not true. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, you dude. make it seem like that's all I eat. Well, you, you're born and raised on Spam, you know? You had it, you had it on tap at all times with, with your mama. Hawaiian. <laughs> Just kidding. They love their spam Hawaii. Lloyd's, dude. We haven't been to Lloyd's. You haven't been to Lloyd's. That was the other to talk about. Steve Wood. We gotta we gotta go to Lloyd's. To Buffalo, Steve. How many freaking trips? No Lloyd's. That was Kevin's fail though. My mom's so in the pedic here. I'm gonna keep this. <laughs> <You know, laughs> uh, I wanted to show off this. Go Bill's got trying to reconnect. How's it going out there? So uh from Switzerland with Anna. Yeah, where would it be? East coast of Italy. We have to do the west coast. East coast of Italy, Anna, we're talking about it. Next year we're gonna see if it makes sense. But having a baby makes it tough. Definitely east coast of Italy, working our way north, not south. But basically, uh Going from Rome over to the coast through, yeah, Bruzese, which is where the family's from, and then going oh, nice. all the way up the coast north. We would love to cut back over and go over to Grand Paradiso, where the National Park is, which is the border of Italy and Switzerland. But oh. that's too much of a trip. We need like probably like three weeks to do that. But just taking like eight, nine days doing the entire east coast of the boot would be fantastic. That, and then Anna has me sold on going to um, northern Spain as well. Definitely want to hit that one. Sounds beautiful. Never Spain, been there. Be sweet. Yeah. Never been to Spain either. But Italy, you know, in 2014, we hit nine cities in two weeks. A lot of traveling. Planes, trains, automobiles. And, and our favorite was Bergamo, uh, Italy, which is just outside of Milan. It's like a monorail right up. And uh, cobblestone. And, you know, couples carrying bread baskets around. And That's amazing. It was it really out of this world. That was, that was really fun. Do Italy do the small towns, not do the big cities. You hit big cities, of course. The history is that. Small towns are more authentic, though. That a doubt. Gojira-wise. Yeah. The Art of Dying or Where Dragons Dwell? Ooh, that's a pretty good one. Where Dragons Dwell. Really? Yeah. I would have guessed Art of Dying. No, it's a good one, though. Why? Why, why is, does that have the edge over the art of dying? I don't know if I can explain it. Just like it a little bit more. Slightly. The outro is pretty sick. Yeah, it was amazing. Plus, no, live would be, the live experience of Where Dragons Dwell would be just insane. Oh, I know Ryan and Kevin Martin got Where Dragons Dwell, so very jealous yeah. that they got that. It's insane. So, I am going to give you I'm going to give you a, a, a word or a noun. And you're going to give me one word that comes first to mind when you hear this. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put you on the spot with some of these. So uh, you want to sit? <laughs> I think I, I think drink a little, little faster, a little refresher. Yeah. All right. My mom. Ooh, food. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dad. Wine. <laughs> Leonard. Younger brother. Leonard. Yeah, say it, man. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> man, I love you, bro. I love you, dude. I love you. He said first word that comes to mind, man. That and fish, without a doubt, dude. Big I, I'm fish biting fan. my tongue with some of these coming up, but uh, you know, <laughs> I actually have this uh, not recommended for kids. This video, so That's I'm all right, just gonna dude. keep talking. All right, uh, Hannah, my little sister. Hannah, sweet, just sweet, sweet person overall. Big heart. Yeah, love you, Hannah. <laughs> Ryan, my twin brother. Oh, dude, Toad. <laughs> my dad loves when I laugh like that. Uh, <laughs> toad, you just easy. heard my. You heard my real <laughs> laugh right there. 
Uh, Kevin. Beer. I don't know. You just you tell me to just speak. I don't know. Uh, I would actually say Metallica if like I thought about it for an actual second, but I just said beer. Metallica ding, ding, without ding. a doubt. Metallica. Ashlyn. <laughs> Good catch. That's an easy one. Thanks, Might have been the easiest one, actually. Aww. Thanks. Steve Wood. Good friend, man. Yeah. Good friend, dude. Zach Schifferly. Another fantastic friend. And also like-minded. Just fucking music. Good dude to hang out with. Whole group up there. Every single one of them. Just to, to pause this real quick. Christian's first time in Buffalo was when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers came and visited the Buffalo Bills in September of 2009. It was our senior year. And uh, we went right to Wegmans. His first time to Wegmans. We got the cases of blue that had the Buffalo Bills swag in it. Yeah. And it was called Bills Bucks Weekend. And uh, it was that weekend where I introduced Christian Lavender, who's been our best bud in college, you know, for three years, to all of our closest friends. And we've been fortunate enough to be surrounded by friends that we've known since elementary school. And I, I Part of the reason why I came home, big reason why I came home from California, living there, and wouldn't have it any other way. Christian fit in perfectly. Like a glove. And uh, it's been great. Matt McCarthy. Colossus. Colossus. You got to know. Yeah. Yeah, you got to gotta know. You got to know. Uh, CJ. Ulrich. Dude. Boston beer. That's the first thing that comes out with Ulrich. What about the size of his lips? <laughs> Al Panatowski. Al Panatowski. Oh, Al? Oh, dude. Every single one of these guys, first thing comes to mind is like great freaking friends, man. Best friend group around, dude, without a doubt. Every single one of them. You could ask me anybody else. I mean, there's a ton of them, dude. Treadway, all these guys, everybody I've met, dude. Um, fantastic well, friends. I mean, it's just like, that's the first thing that comes to my mind with every single one of you guys. Thanks, awesome Tony. dudes. We'll leave it at that with our friends. My Friends by Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, is a really good song. One Hot Minute, I think that was the record. Uh, the Buffalo Bills. Playoffs. Playoffs, baby. Playoffs. It's Help. happening this year. No Brady anymore. He's no down in Tampa. Brady was coming up soon, but what, what comes to mind when you think of Brady? Winner, man. Winner. Doesn't settle. The guy is a competitor. You know, I saw a lot of shirts being sold one day that said uh, at the at the stadium it said Brady Swallows. Uh, Holly Valley. Oh man, dude, Full Metal Jacket. Twelve pack of beers inside the jacket, finishing them all on the mountain. If you were, you know, so many Labatt Blues deep at two a.m., what would it be? Duff's, and Eleven Tavern, or Mighty Taco? Duffs because 9 11, I'm not gonna wait two hours to get my wings if I'm drunk and dying to eat. Love 9 11 and all, but nah, uh, definitely going Duffs at 2 a.m. drunk. Uh, my taco would be a close second. 9 11 definitely takes a backseat. I'm not waiting a freaking long to do. Great got food, a, though. Great food. Got a few more here. Alvin Camara. God, dude. Can't, can't stand him. I hate anybody who's affiliated with the Saints organization, including you, Drew Brees. Fantastic movie. Total Recall 1990. It's one of our favorite ones. Yes. Yes. What about oh, yes? The word yes. The word yes, dude. dude. Probably, I don't know, college. Man, that's what comes to mind, dude. The amount of yes videos that we created. Don't have to do it. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Neighbors, so that one was for Steve Wood, but I got at least one out of him. All right, last last few. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. He owns 
Toad. Toad is his bitch. Toad? And I love the fact that Ryan can't do anything about that right now. I can actually talk about how dominant DK is over Toad and Mario Kart and Nintendo 64. The amount of times DK has pwned Toad, I can't even begin to tell you. You can't even count it. We're talking probably a couple hundred times. No, I, maybe even a thousand times DK has won against Toad. Now, now Kevin, I love him here. Luigi? No. Luigi's not in the class that Toad and DK are. Ryan and Christian? It's one and two. Constantly changing. But DK is usually number one. Screw you, Ryan. Screw you, Toad. Stop it there. Um, <laughs> oh. I was going to say Toad. Toad is, I think he answered that. And Luigi, I think he answered that too. <laughs> You got the little one here. Let me get the baby. Oh, oh! I introduced to you, Kellen Lavender, second guest on the webcast. Yes. Oh, look at that drool. Yeah. Oh. You're on ISO one. Yeah, teething just a little bit. <laughs>